Okay, so in my previous video, I introduced you to the BitBox a little bit. This is a uh, an open source hardware video game console project based on the excellent CPU, the STM32F4, and uh, coming from France with a few people collaborating online. Today, I'm going to turn it on for the first time and just show you uh, how to use it when you first get the thing. So, first of all, you get your BitBox here. Second of all, you have to go on the interwebs and download a certain archive. It's full of these .bin files. You want to extract that archive and then you want to copy them onto a micro SD card. Probably seen a micro SD card. This is one here. And I don't know if your computer has a micro SD slot. For me, I used uh, this adapter here, which fits into a regular slot like that. And then you put that into this USB device. And then you stick it in the computer and you're good to go. So I've already copied the files on there. Next thing you do is you take that SD card and you put it into the SD slot on the BitBox. Just like that. Now you're almost ready to rock. All you have to do is plug your VGA cable into the VGA port of the BitBox. And then you take your micro SD cable and you plug it in there. See those LEDs come on? Now what we're going to do is I'm going to switch my monitor over from the DVI input that's actually running Windows. I'm going to switch it over to VGA. And then I'm going to press reset to start it off. Voila! Bitbox. So this is just a demo video that Makapoof, the uh, guy who started the project, has made just to just to test everything. Uh, apparently you can also hook up a video game controller on these and use it to select between the different binaries that are also on the SD card, but I haven't done that yet because I don't actually have a USB video game controller at the moment. Uh, I tried my PS3 controller, but that didn't work. So anyway, if you want to check out the uh, BitBox, then you can go to the bitboxblogspot.com uh, URL. And if you want to see how to program for this microcontroller, the STM32F4, which is an excellent chip because it's got floating point, it's 168 megahertz, and it's relatively low power for what you get, uh, then go to my site, diydsp.com.